guest speakers, uh, Dr. Emma Ismail from Wada University Cairo, uh, all the lecturers, uh, GSC Escos, and all of fellow participants. Assalamualaikum and very good evening. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Abdul Rahim, uh, your moderator for today's session. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of you to this uh, tea and cookie session. Uh, this sixth edition organized by Graduate Student uh, Club, School of Business and Economics, UC Putra, Malaysia. So uh, this is session uh, is one of the platform to spread ideas, uh, inspire and motivate its audience and help uh, in gaining new knowledge uh, in terms of academic genie. So before we proceed to our event today, I would like to invite all Muslims to recite together uh, uh, Surah Al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Malik Yawmiddin. Iyaka na'udu wa iyaka nasta'in. Idina suratul wa al-mustaqim. Surat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayri maudu bi alayhim uratulim. Amin. Hope Allah will bless and guide our program runs fully and achieve the objective inshallah. So uh, before we proceed, I would like to invite uh, GSC President, Mr. Ani Inam. Are you there? Yes, I can. I am there, but actually I was outside. That's oh, why I was not able to join from my laptop. So I'm, I'm just uh, like talking to you via audio. So I welcome everybody, and especially the speaker, Dr. Iman, uh, that she came here and she is about to give the lecture about PhD and the journey of that because it's very much important topic. And nowadays, like what happens that. Uh, whenever we are doing PhD, we face so many challenges that we are not able to manage our time, especially for those who are married or who are having different jobs and uh, who, do, who are doing businesses. So for those, I think it is very hard to manage the time when they also are pursuing for their PhD. So this is one of the very nice topic. And uh, I think most of us will be so motivated to know some tips from doctors, uh, Dr. Iman, so that uh, they can imp uh, implement those tips to themselves and can manage the time properly. So I just want to thank all the EXCO members who, are, uh, who have done efforts for marketing and for, for, uh, for representing the club and for doing all the efforts for this session. So I just want to welcome Dr. Uh, Iman, uh, in but for for coming in our uh, GSC platform, thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Mr. President. Before we begin our session, I would like to introduce our guest speaker. Dr. Ima is an instructor and assistant professor in Badar University in Cairo. Previously, she was a module leader in the Faculty of Management Science at MSA University. She obtained PhD in Tourism Management from Suez Canal University, Faculty of Business and Hospitality Management in 2012 and deliver various courses across different disciplines and faculties such as uh, business, pharmacy, art and design, and mass communication. So we, if you got any question, kindly write in the chat box and we will read the question at the end of the presentation. So all right, without any further ado, I would like to welcome and invite Dr. Iman to begin her presentation uh, session with the topic of managing your time during PhD journey. The floor is yours, Dr. Morning, everyone. This is Dr. Iman Ismail from Cairo. I will, I will take you today through the session on how to manage your time during your PhD journey. Uh, I'm a PhD holder in uh, marketing and a fellow of the Higher Education Academy uh, in Education and Learning. Uh, I have finished my PhD uh, in uh, 2012, and I'm uh, re mentioning that because I'm going to tell you about how uh, difficult it was for me and how, um, I mean, um, challenging it was uh, for me to uh, obtain my PhD uh, along with working in a different city. I had to travel uh, every day from uh, my uh, city. It's a coastal, a little small city, coastal city in uh, Egypt. I had to travel daily to uh, Cairo. Uh, I had to commute every day and then to take another uh, uh, means of transportation. That was before uh, me to learn how to drive a car. Uh, I worked in the aviation industry before joining the academics. Uh, so um, I have some uh, corporate field and at the same time I am uh, a dynamic person so my life uh, with uh, working along with uh, accomplishing my PhD it was uh, such a challenge but it felt so well at the end 
and to succeed and obtain your degree, there is nothing more uh, satisfying uh, and uh, interesting or rewarding for you uh, than obtain, obtaining your PhD and seeing that you are carrying your uh, outcome, you're carrying your uh, little uh, baby in your hand, the work, the outcome of, the, of years, long years of work and long hours. Uh, so let's go uh, through uh, the session uh, together. By the end of this uh, session, uh, you will should, you should have a clear understanding of the concept of time management and why do we need to manage our time. The elements of time management, common time management problems and common wasters that steal our time. How to effectively use your time and the time management process. How to prioritize your time and effort to focus on the most valuable activities that should eventually lead to achieving your goals or that contribute to your goals. Personality style differences in time management. How your body clock works and what's the best time to do what activities. How to plan your day and get things done. Quick tips to manage your time. So the concept of, of managing time. Time management is more about just keeping a calendar. Actually, it's about identifying your obligations, carefully considering what, what's important to be done or what's important to begin with and how to carefully manage or divide your time among those uh, obligations and priorities. Uh, it means uh, taking control of your time because time is an important resource of our day or of our lives. So you should be careful and taking control what amount of time you are spending in doing what activities. Also, um, time management, it is an art of arranging, organizing, scheduling, and budgeting your time. Just as if you have an um, amount of money that you should spend all, but you should spend at the same time in a careful manner. Skills of time management. Um, actually, the skills of time management, it differs from one to another, of course, but uh, this is something that we can uh, learn or that we can uh, know how to master. Uh, we can practice uh, daily, we can practice, and along with time, you will be more able to, uh, or you will take bigger control of your time so that you can meet or achieve your goals and meet your deadlines. At the end, Time management will help you um, improve your quality of life, actually, when you feel not stressed, uh, when you are keeping good balance between your uh, time and your work or your tasks. This will improve your uh, overall quality of life and leave you uh, more relaxed or unstressed. So what do we need? Why do we need to manage our time? Just as we said, we can conclude, conclude that the biggest aim or benefit of managing our time is reaching our goals. I believe there's nothing more important for uh, any of you then obtaining their uh, degree. Uh, so uh, by using or implementing uh, time management, you can save your time, reduce the stress and achieve the work-life balance, uh, increase your productivity, which means that you will, with the same amount of time that you got, you just by careful dividing or careful implementing of this, of managing your time, you will uh, achieve a bigger work output of the same day to function more effectively and make the best use of your uh, resource, which is time here. So the elements of time management, the first thing is that you should be aware of your time. You should be aware of your time, how much time you have left after um, doing all your activities, your important activities, of course. Uh, what are your biggest time wasters? Uh, what are your priorities that, are, that cannot wait to be delayed or that cannot be delayed? Uh, how to be committed and a self-manager uh, for yourself? Uh, how to carefully manage your resources, how to uh, smartly uh, set your goals and track those achievements, uh, how to plan and monitor your plan, evaluate your planning skills, how to uh, re-correct your plan or correct the deviations. So at first, what we should do is that we should list down all the activities, the daily activities that we have to do. For example, class attendance, relaxation, time with family or friends, uh, exercise. Uh, if you are a member of some club or organization or some charity or volunteer work, uh, required reading. Uh, if you have any hobbies or entertainment, and which is, by the way, is a very important thing to be inclu included within your life schedule, because uh, doing things that are uh, away or out of your uh, discipline or study area will help you uh, feel connected to the outer world, you know, feel that you are uh, you are having a social life and another personal life and that you are doing things that you really like to do. Uh, 
uh, studying, working at a job, religious activity, uh, shopping, grocery shopping, of course, if you are living alone, uh, preparing uh, meals, house cleaning, non-required reading, sleeping, and other activities. So the first step that we have to do in order to manage our time is to list down all the activities that we uh, usually do or that, we are, or that we are usually committed to do, then provide them a rank from one to five, let's say. Let's see the scales that we uh, got fed up using during our uh, PhDs and uh, reading articles. So we provide a scale here from one to five, the most important uh, item, uh, give it uh, five. Uh, and uh, rank how many or, or estimate how many hours you waste or you consume doing those activities. After that, you will have an outline of your day, how many hours are spent on sleeping, for example, on reading, on um, reading uh, articles for your PhD, on doing your work, uh, calling family or friends, and so on. So you should identify how many hours per day, then how many hours per week, Okay, uh, then minus the uh, seven days multiplied by 24 hours. So we have the total hours per week are 168 hours minus the total that you are going to uh, reach from this uh, little uh, calculation. So the left number, number is the total number of hours that's left for study or leisure. And you will be surprised to find that the left uh, number of hours or the left amount is not that big, by the way. You, so that's why you really have to manage your time uh, carefully. So this is the first step to know how many hours per week do I have left after doing all the important errands and tasks, okay? So what's the, press, the process after that to manage your time? Actually, time management process uh, is divided into uh, five stages. Planning, organizing, delegating, managing interruptions, and finally, control. So first, planning. The plan uh, will represent a roadmap for you in order to help you or take you step by step during uh, your uh, PhD uh, to make the best use of your resources and head towards achieving your goal. So with uh, the planning process of the first step and when you are uh, during your planning process, it's set your goals. Otherwise, if you haven't set your goals, if you don't know what goals you have to achieve by when, then you are just going through an aimless journey. Goals can be strategic, tactical, or operational. So strategic goals, they are the long-term goals that require more than three years to complete. And I believe uh, earning or obtaining our PhD degree uh, can be considered a strategic goal. Uh, the tactical goals, they are the medium goals that require three to 12 months to complete. Operational goals, they are the short-term goals or the exact operational steps that you have to take in order to uh, achieve the tactical goals, which will, at the end, achieve the bigger goal, which is our strategic goal, inshallah, which is obtaining your uh, PhD. So the operational goals, they are the actions, the steps that consume a few hours to a few days. And that's, um, you always plan from uh, the bigger uh, picture or a wider picture and go and then narrow your planning so that you can reach what activities or that you can identify what activities are necessary to achieve or to fulfill your goals. So first of all, when deciding your goals, we agreed that in order to uh, do uh, an effective uh, planning or to know what is your roadmap, uh, then you have to decide on your goals. But deciding on our goals, it has specific characteristics. Any goal should be a smart goal, which means they should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant or realistic, and time-bound. What do we mean by this? So specific uh, goal means that you should exactly identify or specify what do I need to do. For example, I need to finish the first chapter of my PhD. So if I just say that and leave it like this, then it's not a smart goal and it's not, it doesn't, it's vague. It doesn't have the rest of details that are necessary to view or to set the operational steps for achieving our goals. So I would like, or I want, or I need to uh, finalize the first chapter of my uh, dissertation, okay? Measurable, I said that I want to work on my PhD and I specified that I will measure, I just need to, finish the first chapter, 
okay? Achievable, yes, it is achievable because it's relevant, it's achievable and relevant uh, actually, because uh, achievable because I'm just specifying that it's just one chapter. So I didn't say I will finish my whole PhD dissertation uh, this uh, semester or this uh, quarter of the year, for example. I just said that it's one chapter. Uh, and it is realistic because it's just one chapter and uh, time bound I should specify by the end of which time will I measure my success in achieving this goal or not. For example, I will finish the first chapter of my PhD by the end of the next month, for example. So this is a specific uh, goal. It is measurable because I said that it's just half, uh, sorry, one chapter of my PhD achievable. Because it's not because it's not that big and it is achievable. I am an academic researcher. Uh, researcher at the end of the way, uh, relevant and realistic. Relevant to my work, for example, which is my big goal, and it contributes to my long-term plan or my big strategic goal. And time bound. So if this month passes, the next month passes, and I didn't achieve my or a uh, goal, which is uh, accomplishing the first chapter of my. PhD, then I will be able to uh, say or judge myself that I failed to fulfill this goal. So any goal should be specific, should be, uh, you say the quantity or the part of the goal or the part of the plan, is it a big goal or you have you broken your goals into smaller ones? Uh, you should be realistic about achieving your goals. Uh, they should be, of course, relevant to what you are doing or uh, relevant to your long-term plan or your bigger strategic goal, and it should be bounded by time, means that it is attached to a specific time, so that after this time passes, you can either judge yourself whether you uh, succeeded in achieving this goal or you haven't achieved uh, your goal, so you have to reschedule or replan your goals. So this is uh, an uh, application or uh, this is a, a chart or uh, an activity that you can uh, use at home, of course, or a tool that you can use in order to set your goals. Uh, you should mention all your goals that you would like to achieve here in this area. Specify exactly how would you uh, achieve, uh, how would you go about achieving those uh, goals. Each goal should be specific. Measure how, what is the item or the part of the partition of the goal that you would like to achieve attainable, you have control over achieving this or achievable, relevant, why is it applicable to your life? And you should always start by the goals that will contribute to your big dream or, that, or to your biggest goal, which is, of course, as we said, our PhD. Time-based or time-bound so that you can uh, attach it uh, like uh, to a time, just as we uh, explained. Uh, and here I would like to share with you uh, a video to explain this in a better uh, way or to support this. Oh, sorry, that maybe there is there is no sound. No. You can see the visual, but then there is no sound. I think that there is no sound. Yeah, there is no sound. So I, I so what 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 could be the problem? I mean, I have the volume uh, loud here. Uh, uh, actually, Doctor, I think you have to allow for the sound in Zoom. 
I think so. That will resolve the problem. Uh, resetting, yeah. It's okay to complete it. There is, uh, there is no narration in the video, I, I think. So it's okay to point to point. It's okay, uh, yeah. Okay. I mean better than interrupting uh, the video. Uh, maybe doctor, when you share the uh, share this uh, window uh, from Zoom, there's an option down there on the left side uh, to to also allow for the audio. So I, I think so. Uh, it's, it's like it's like that. Just, just doctor Iman, how are you? Hi, uh, hi how are you? Uh, you can reshare, re making a reshare to the slides again. Stop sharing and share again, and allow uh, allow sound. So now I'm sharing, uh, okay. So share screen. Yes, maybe you can reshare. Okay. okay. Hopefully it will be okay. If the problem persists, then maybe you can share the link. Uh, of the video to everyone and can we can pursue for the for, yes. for the same. It's, it's okay just uh, two minutes to just to uh, you know break the so so now you can hear the voice right yeah yeah you can hear and you can and you you view the video the video right no the video no oh, no we cannot hear the video we cannot see the video even ممكن يا دكتور حضرتك تشارك الرابط يعني نسخ لنا الرابط وحطيه في الشات. اوكي اتس اوكي هو بس الفيديو اصلا كان قرب كان قرب يخلص يعني هو بس عبد الرحيم اللي قال لي احط الصوت هو الفيديو كان اوريدي قرب يخلص يعني جاست ا تيب يعني. اوكي. اوكي يعني انت لخبطتني اصلا. جو هيد جو هيد يا دكتور جو هيد جو هيد. Now we, now we can hear yes. you. We cannot see. You know, Abdul Rahim, it was, it was okay. The sound is okay, but then we can't see the video. Okay, so now uh, if I do this. Now everything is okay. Yeah.
Okay, say, so we have uh, seen, now you see the slides, right? Okay, okay so, so we have uh, seen or have you together how to set your SMART uh, goals and how to set your goals and at the same time bound your search to specific time and boundaries so you can uh, achieve a bigger uh, control of your time and a bigger um, effectiveness or achieve bigger effectiveness out of your uh, time and achieve your uh, goals. So uh, the second thing, when you are setting your goals or listing down your tasks, to start with identifying what's urgent and what is important. Okay, so some things, uh, urgent tasks, uh, uh, they demand immediate attention. However, it doesn't um, automatically make it important. So let's agree that the important tasks are the tasks that are going to add to your final goal, which is uh, going towards your uh, PhD. Okay, so those are the important goals. However, there sometimes we have to uh, achieve or to uh, carry out uh, urgent tasks that because they are, for example, required by supervisor, for example, required by your uh, workplace. Okay, so uh, you have to know what is uh, urgent and what is important. Um, we have to uh, specify the important tasks and start with them or keep with them uh, our mind. And if they are urgent and at the same time important, for example, I'm going to, uh, I have a seminar next week and I'm going to present um, the uh, amount of work that I have uh, achieved so far in my PhD. So this is urgent and this is important. Important because it achieves or it contributes to your final goal. And it is uh, urgent because it's next week. So you have to uh, uh, achieve or you have to go through a lot of preparation. This is another uh, matrix. Uh, this is the, the quadrant of managed. So those are the urgent and important tasks. You just drop them here. Uh, those are the uh, uh, quadrant of uh, leadership and quality. This is uh, not urgent tasks, but they are important. Okay, for example, uh, not urgent. You should, for example, you should do some shopping for the house. So this is important, but it's not urgent. You should take, for example, some family member uh, to uh, the doctor. No, actually, this could be urgent and uh, important. Uh, quadrant three, the quadrant of the deception here, we really drop the tasks that are urgent, but they are not important. So th those here might uh, be meetings, for example, at work, uh, replying to uh, specific uh, emails, uh, getting uh, calls, uh, receiving and replying to calls. So they are urgent because they are required by someone who is super superior than you are, but they are not important, meaning that they do not act or they do not contribute to your final goal of achieving your uh, PhD. And here is the quadrant of waste, which of course, I'm sure it is the, the most lovable quadrant for all of us. Here, those are the tasks that are not urgent and not important, like uh, going out, for example, uh, going to a party, um, just um, chit-chatting over the phone, doing pleasant, pleasant activities and wasting our time. So here, this quadrant you should eliminate. Just try to eliminate. How to eliminate? By keeping a few tasks here, trying to finish tasks one by one. Try to uh, pursue uh, on finishing those tasks. Try to motivate yourself in order to eliminate this list. Because this list, if it expanded too long, you will just feel uh, out of control. You will uh, feel that you are disappointed because you have many urgent and important tasks and you cannot uh, take control of. Here, spend most, uh, usually we spend a uh, long time here because they greatly contribute to our uh, goals and you have enough time doing them. So they are important, but they are not urgent. For example, writing your dissertation. It is important, but not urgent because you already know that you have long time or you have a, a, a space of time that you can plan and make good use of. Here in this quadrant, this is the not important and urgent tasks. Spend some time here, but not as the task that requires uh, mid, uh, immediate attention as they do not directly contribute to your goal. So here are the tasks that are urgent, but not important. For example, you have to do some errands. You have to attend some uh, important event, for example. So it is urgent uh, to reply to an uh, email, for example, but they are not important. And here, this uh, quadrant, you should just avoid those tasks unless you have actually a space of time to do them. Or you can just do them after you finish your urgent and important tasks. So let them be a treat, for example, something that you reward yourself. After I do uh, the urgent and important task, for example, I will call my best friend just to chit chat for a while. 
Okay, so this is uh, an example of uh, this urgent and urgency importance uh, matrix. Here you drop the urgent and important tasks. Here the not important but urgent tasks. Here the important but not urgent tasks. And here the not important, not urgent tasks. And you can see here that you should delete them. And those you should do them. Those tasks you should decide or plan on doing them. And here you should try to delegate if you can delegate and we will go to the part of delegating tasks uh, later on uh, throughout the session. And those are the uh, tasks, for example, go to a party. It is not important, but it might be urgent if you are invited or if it's a relative's uh, wedding, for example. Uh, go shopping with friends. It's not important, but uh, urgent. Join school events. It is important and urgent. Uh, for example, um, I need to get uh, something that's uh, get up, it's important and urgent, for example. Do your homeworks, important, um, might not be urgent. It depends on uh, your uh, deadline. This is a blank one that you can use at home as well as a tool. You can choose whatever tool to help you uh, plan and schedule your uh, goals and tasks. So uh, after that, we need to organize and schedule our tasks. Here, of course, our famous and popular, I'm sure most of us have this uh, to-do list. Uh, actually, I used to have always a handy, a handy to-do list in my bag and everywhere. But sometimes when uh, we are burdened with so many tasks, uh, work, study, and so on, sometimes we feel that we lose control or that we are disappointed. So we just uh, be delayed behind or we lag behind because you are a little bit demotivated. That's why from time to another, you should motivate yourself uh, try to get yourself back on track. Uh, remind yourself that there is nothing more important than uh, obtaining your PhD and it's, uh, it will uh, still be your biggest success. Uh, so you should here uh, list the tasks according to their priority. Uh, make sure to allocate um, realistic time to each goal, to each task. Don't uh, squeeze yourself or uh, don't uh, jiggle the time so that, uh, for example, I set uh, an hour to do something that requires two hours. So when an hour passes, I just, I'll just i be disappointed. I, I will uh, feel a failure. Complete the pending tasks. Start with the pending tasks one by one. Uh, and there is a concept that I always uh, follow or believe in, which is eat your ugly frog first. Uh, so you, if you can start with the biggest task that uh, if you finish, you just feel relieved. Of course, it should be important and urgent or preferably uh, urgent uh, one that contributes to your uh, PhD. So if you just uh, finish this ugly frog first, you will feel a uh, victory and that you have achieved a big uh, progress. Uh, do not begin fresh work unless you have finished the previous one. So one by one, so that we can feel uh, victory and check uh, corresponding to the task that we have already finalized. Take the one that you have completed and ensure that you respect the time you specified for yourself. So if I say this requires two hours and this is the realistic time for this activity to be done. So I have to try to respect and stick to those two hours. Okay. Be self-driven, which means that you should uh, motivate yourself, set the deadline for yourself. Always think that there is nothing important, really. There is nothing important than your study, than your future. Nothing is important. Um, I used to take off the plug of the telephone uh, back uh, in the college when I'm about to study. Unplug the telephone, uh, the landline person is speaking about this. That was uh, uh, long years ago. Um, now, if I am uh, committed, my, if I committed myself to studying, then I should just leave the mobile aside. Uh, do not wait for superiors to ask you every time. For example, do not wait for your superior at college or your supervisor to ask you about the pending work or the pending task each time, which means uh, always tell yourself and try to be self-driven. While you are scheduling, uh, it's important to include uh, tea breaks or a break in general, uh, time for net surfing, checking your social media, uh, changing the status, uh, time for personal calls. Uh, know that you are not a machine. You cannot just work eight or nine straight hours without a break. Uh, assign at least 30 to 35 minutes a break within your uh, schedule so that you can uh, go to the, bath the bathroom, uh, stretch your uh, body, uh, call your friends and family and so on. Uh, and it's preferably uh, recommended to uh, include time for unexpected things. For, exa for example, 
um, you as students and you are expatriates, many of you I know as they are, uh, can be expatriates from other uh, places or other cities, you can just get um, a sudden uh, visit from a friend or from a colleague. Maybe it's his break and he wants to waste his break or to enjoy and consume his break, but he doesn't know that this, this is your uh, work time. So you can just uh, be surprised with, uh, with a door knocking or an unexpected visitor. So just assign specific time within your schedule, half an hour or an hour or something, so that you can be prepared to unexpected uh, things, unexpected errands, unexpected calls, for example, unexpected visitors and so on. Okay, so this is our uh, weekly planner, okay, the whole day. You should uh, list here uh, the tasks of every day. This, is, uh, uh, this includes uh, as well a place or a space uh, to include your exercise, uh, your sports exercise. Uh, this is to specify whether it's Sunday, Monday, the week, uh, days. Here, the meals, for example, uh, housekeeping, work, school, and other uh, errands or appointments, family activities, and so on. So you should use this uh, activities or tasks listed here to drop them here hour by hour. For example, student work, uh, free time, uh, studying history, studying math, and so on, sleep. So this is how it should look like after you uh, use it or after you fill in your tasks. Then we move on to the third stage of the time management process, which is uh, delegating. Uh, delegating, which means exchanging skills. So if I am uh, clever, for example, at writing uh, or revising or proofreading or revising the language uh, of, for example, a written part in uh, a part of the literature, for example, then you can, I can do this for one of my colleagues. There's nothing uh, harmful with that and nothing wrong with that. So we can exchange skills. For example, you are good at collecting articles for a specific topic. For example, you are good at identifying what are the methodology techniques that are used or implemented. You are good at outlining and reviewing those. So you can do this for your colleague and a colleague who is, for example, clever at the language or linguistic skills, he can exchange contact with you. Uh, someone is clever at reviewing uh, or revising the references. Uh, and in general, uh, we can exchange skills. This makes the work, uh, the workload, you know, less or more relieving. Feeling that there is somebody who is carrying this big responsibility for you, or someone is carrying the load for you, uh, as if someone is helping you doing something. But here uh, we have to uh, pay attention to specific items when we are delegating uh, uh, some tasks to other. First, authority, responsibility, and accountability. Authority, which means that I have the power and right to delegate this uh, work to uh, another colleague. For example, if I am uh, at work, I, can, I have the power to delegate my own work, my own items and stuff, not others people's. So uh, I have the power and right to allocate and divide tasks uh, and delegate, take decisions about who to delegate to. Uh, responsibility. Um, I should select a responsible person, a responsible uh, colleague to uh, assist me or to be delegated to those uh, tasks uh, and accountable. And I know that this uh, person whom uh, I chose uh, or whom I selected is accountable for the task assigned to. So I just don't delegate to anyone. I have to um, uh, first consider the task if they can be delegated and know how to effectively delegate. So first of all, if this task is uh, important, so if this task is important, I have to do it. If there is nothing uh, left to be done, to, uh, I have to do this task myself, then just I will have to do it. So if the task is not important, just resist and dump it. If yes, it is important, so ask yourself, does this need to be done by me? If no, then consider delegating. If yes, does this need to be done now? If yes, then just do it. So if it has to be done by me and it has to be done now, then there is no other option than just doing the task. However, if the task is no, is not important at all to so just resist and done. Uh, but if this has to be done, ask yourself, can it be delegated? I mean, if I cannot, if I don't have to do it by myself, then I can consider delegating it to a colleague. Um, if 
uh, this has to be done now. It's just as we said, you should do it. But otherwise, if it doesn't have to be done now, then you can plan to accomplish it and delegate it to another uh, person. Uh, of course, the effective delegation uh, occurs after clar clarifying your goals and uh, objectives. I just uh, like uh, every uh, while to construct on the previous knowledge. So we learned how to set our SMART goals and we learned what are our tasks and th that we they should be time bound and uh, what free uh, time or space of time we have in general during our days to allocate. So after this, after deciding the goals, smart goals and objectives, um, what are, we can ask ourselves, what are the goals and objectives that can be done with someone else? Then select the right person that who is accountable and responsible, uh, organize those tasks be delegated, Make sure to provide your colleague or the person that you are going to delegate to with clear instructions, uh, request feedback from him or from her, uh, set deadlines and ask for reports or agreements or uh, a recap on the task that you delegated to, uh, support and monitor where required, and at the end recognize whether the uh, result of the delegation has achieved you or have, has achieved for you the required outcome or not. And of course, delegation doesn't mean that you totally uh, take your hand out of doing the task. It just means that someone is assisting you in finalizing a specific task or in approaching the uh, accomplishment stage or the end of achieving a goal. So you will have at the end to, of course, to recognize whether this result is the required one or not. And you will have at the end to revise the work because you are the one responsible for the task in the first place. Any questions so far? Okay. No. So let's uh, proceed. The next stage is uh, control, to take control of the time and to control the whole plan. So controlling, uh, it means actually checking whether your plan is working and how you are actually using your time. So for example, I have set uh, goals and objectives, uh, for example, for, for this semester, let's say a period or a duration of uh, three months. Uh, after this, uh, regularly, of course, I will not uh, wait until the end of the semester. Regularly, let's say every week, for example, every couple of weeks, uh, according to my set goals, I have to revise my schedule every now and then. And after this uh, period of time passes by, I should uh, identify whether there is a deviation between my planned schedule and my uh, actual followed schedule. If uh, I have achieved the outcomes exactly as I have set them or write them down, then I am successful in fulfilling my plans and goals and sticking to it. Uh, if not, then I have to do some alterations or amendments to my schedule so that I can ask myself, am I making progress? Which tasks did I successfully complete and which ones did I fail to accomplish? Um, is my energy level uh, in balance with the energy level needed for the designated uh, task? Which means, um, can I uh, read uh, three articles, for example, uh, in one day or just one article and I'm exhausted? So it's important to be frank and true to ourselves about our energy levels. We are different from each other. Um, how much stress did you suffer with this plan? So if it was stress, stressful and it left you with uh, stress, uh, then you have to make it a bit flexible. What are your most common time wasters and how much did you proc uh, procrastinate if at all? Procrastinate, which means that you just delay, just delay task, you just sit and relax, you lose time. So in general, uh, uh, controlling means monitoring and evaluating your activities after a stage of time has passed so that you can correct yourself, put yourself again on the correct track. Uh, controlling also means to manage your distractions and interruptions. So uh, one of our biggest is, uh, distraction is over socializing. For example, someone who is social, he uh, talks to everyone, he listens to everyone. Uh, there is no fixed break time. Uh, he might be shy to say uh, no, for example. Uh, telephone interruptions, the long calls, uh, not being able to uh, prioritize your tasks in uh, an efficient or effective way. Uh, poorly run meetings with classmates. For example, you agreed to set with a classmate so that you, uh, in order to agree on delegating specific tasks, 
or exchange specific skills together, but you just sat together, chit-chatting, uh, getting back uh, memories, uh, planning, for example, for the weekends, or even complaining about your current status or your current uh, position in your PhD or your pro progress, but you didn't achieve any outcome. Any outcome that will contribute at the end to what, as we said, the biggest goal, which is obtaining your degree. So poorly run meetings, or for example, we can, might agree to sit and study together before an exam and just waste the time with no outcome in studying. The drop-in visitors, as we said before, that you have to uh, accept or uh, receive uh, people at your home, for example. Uh, procrastination, poorly run time management. You just delay everything. You plan to do uh, two things today and you just do one thing and you say to yourself, it's okay, I still have time, time is long. So you procrastinate uh, tasks. Those are the biggest uh, distractions and interruptions. Uh, so how can you manage those uh, interruptions? Other uh, distractions, of course, if you, before you study, you have to organize your desk. So uh, in order uh, to uh, do this, uh, just make sure to keep your desk organized after you finish studying. Just, you know, the concept of the organized mess. So it is still messy and there are still uh, many items on my desk uh, or in my room, uh, but they are organized, meaning that, for example, the books are piled uh, on each other, uh, the pens, the paper, uh, the articles and so on. So you always declutter your desk, file, make sure to uh, carry out a good uh, filing uh, system. You file your uh, similar uh, tasks or similar uh, documents together. Uh, manage the drop-in visitors, learn to say no in a polite way. You can just reflect this by, uh, you know, a facial expression or just be frank about, not, not a bad facial expression, of course, just a, a nice smile or in a polite and a gentle way. And you can just say that um, you are busy or tell him in a way, or tell the visitor in some way, some gentle way that uh, you are uh, busy. Uh, manage your documents. If you just read articles and you already have them soft copy, uh, so uh, you just can dump them or take rid of them so that you don't uh, get surprised that you have this uh, big pile of papers that you don't need anymore. Manage your phone and emails. Try to terminate calls politely. Uh, clear out your email from time to time. Uh, try to folder to uh, folder names or to uh, label your folders by name classify your task, classify your emails. Other time wasters could be watching your TV. For me, for example, I love watching TV, actually. Uh, so we can just, or we must just kill our TV or just be uh, persistent about if we are studying, then close the TV. You are not going to watch TV. Uh, procrastination, as we said, saying yes to any tasks all the time. Uh, sometimes you are a helpful person, uh, someone who just like helping others. So you don't know how to embarrass people or to let them down by refusing their demands. And this might influence you, influence and take your time. Uh, perfectionism. Uh, spending a uh, long time, I sometimes do this, by the way, I spend long, long time, uh, for example, uh, this presentation, I spend long time just to adjust everything to match together, everything falls within the frame of the screen, and I do this in everything and the lectures, uh, so uh, this is good, it, the outcome is always a high quality work, but actually it consumes time, so let's agree that it's better to do things uh, but just do things than doing them perfectly. Uh, so do things even, even if they are not 100% perfect. Uh, this is better than leaving things undone or unfinished. Multitasking. Uh, I am reading, uh, for example, an article and at the same time uh, I, I had to open the door, I had to call the supermarket, I had to, uh, for example, manage my uh, room or uh, tidy my uh, room. Uh, also, other big time waster is worrying. Worrying about the future is a big time waster that sometimes leave us disappointed, leave us just thinking, thinking of the past, 
thinking of things that we might have done uh, in a better way, worrying about the, fu the future, will I be able to finish my PhD? Uh, when will I be able to get back home and see my family, for example? Uh, worrying about what am I going to do after the PhD? When I see people who got promoted, uh, travel to, any, uh, to other places, working in nice places, um, living in good living standards. So I sometimes keep worrying with those thoughts and with the current time that I have that will eventually take me to achieve those goals. So just stop worrying and start working or let's start uh, put ourselves into action. Another tool to uh, take control of your time. Control also means controlling your time. So there is this technique, which is called the Pomodoro, the Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro, which is tomato in uh, Italian. You know, uh, there is a famous uh, classic kitchen timer. Uh, the housewives uh, used to uh, you know, uh, roll it like this. Uh, just like the timer in the stove itself or in the cot, uh, it rings an alarm after uh, this bell-like uh, alarm after a specific time. So um, the Pomodoro technique is a time management method that was developed by uh, someone called Francesco Cirillo in the late 1980s. This technique uses a timer to break down work into intervals, and usually the known intervals are 25 minutes in length, separated by short breaks. Okay, so what are the steps to uh, include or to uh, adopt this Pomodoro technique? You split your work into small chunks. For example, you need to, uh, for example, uh, read uh, some uh, article. So I will, for example, it is uh, 15 pages. So uh, each 25 minutes will suit, uh, for example, uh, let's say four pages or five pages, according, of course, to the reading pace and the understanding uh, pace that you have to uh, conclude out of those, uh, out of this uh, reading. So split your work into small chunks, pick the task and concentrate on it. Set the timer of the mobile for 25 minutes. During this uh, 25, those 25 minutes, don't do anything other than reading your article or focusing on your task. If the, your mobile beeps, neglect it, ignore it. If it rings, just don't look at it. After the 25 minutes, give yourself five minutes. Actually, I give myself 10 minutes because five are too uh, short. 10 minutes. Uh, check your uh, progress. Uh, take uh, here, they say five minutes, but let's uh, say five to 10 minutes. During this break, it's recommended that you uh, change your uh, posture. If you are facing the laptop, then go take a walk around the house, uh, open the window, uh, do some physical activity, uh, drink uh, some uh, water, drink some juice, uh, eat a snack, uh, then get back to your activity and start another uh, 25 uh, uh, minutes or another 25 duration or another Pomodoro. After that, after four breaks, take a 30 minutes break and keep on working. This will leave you fresh. Every two, every half an hour, you will feel that you are fresh. You just changed uh, your uh, posture, changed what you are we're uh, doing. Uh, this works for uh, tasks that are uh, boring and that require long extended time. It's better to break them into smaller chunks so that they are, you feel that they are lighter, they are not that heavy to be accomplished. Just uh, I was telling you uh, a while ago that each one of us is uh, different in his energy level, different in how they manage their time, different in their tasks, uh, in their reading pace and understanding pace or comprehension pace. So uh, we, let's know together the personality style in time management and how each one uh, should be uh, managed himself or what works best for each personality style. Okay. The first style is the achievement management. Those people who measure their success based on how much they take on. So if I am involved in several tasks, then I am a successful person. Okay, you will experience those types of people at work. They like to uh, brag and just keep saying that we are involved in many tasks in several departments. Our work is involved with other colleagues and other departments. They always like to take responsibilities on. Those, they cannot say no to tasks. They often get overwhelmed by the amount of work they have. They are depend dependable, helpful, but actually, unfortunately, they often fail to complete the tasks. 
So this is the achievement management style. The second style is the casual management. Those people who always procrastinate, they always delay to more, today's task to, uh, until tomorrow. They have a tendency to believe that they will always have the time to complete work and get the work time. But actually, they often tend to lose the track of time and things get lost uh, of them and it turns into a chaos of time. Casual managers tend to think with the right brain and they often, they actually are more creative people. You can find the casual managers or the casual management personality in general is creative, but they always tend uh, to uh, lose or miss deadlines or sometimes they don't uh, finish uh, projects as uh, should be or uh, till the desired outcome. After that, the crisis management style, those are the people who have a tendency to consider every task as a top priority task. They are always alert in everything. They take on several tasks at once because they cannot, uh, they are not clever in deciding what is the priority, what's urgently required. Uh, so they always start and get engaged in starting and opening many channels, starting many things, but just getting a few things done. Such individuals, they work well under pressure and deadlines, um, and they are motivated by uh, deadlines. Uh, so uh, if there is a deadline, they will just have to, there's no other way, they will have to select what's urgently required and what's very important to start with. with. But if we leave them just to their sense, their personality styles, they just cannot set the priorities. They feel that everything is a crisis, everything is a uh, priority, uh, so they uh, easily get stressed and they are easily distracted as well. The precision management, those people who are, uh, who can be described as perfectionists, those are the people who deliver high quality work, but they expense or they uh, spend a lot of time uh, attending to specific details, to very small details. They are very detail oriented. They tend to waste a lot of time um, and energy doing things that might not contribute that much or that might not be that evident in the final outcome of the project. So they can be blamed for being slow. Uh, they can be, uh, they can be, uh, they might be blamed for being uh, or for losing time uh, because they try to or they submit, always submit tasks at the last time just before the deadline or maybe even if there is another or an extended deadline you will find them uh, fulfilling this deadline because they just need all the time and energy just to accomplish a specific task and project till its deadline. The final uh, style or the last style is the social management style those individuals, they are the people who are very active. They like talking than doing. Uh, those people work better in the marketing, of course, and the sales uh, and uh, PR activities. Uh, they are good at managing events, good at uh, familiarizing people or familiarizing the newcomers or the new students with the current status or the situation uh, or the progress of the study, the nature of the study. Uh, those people, of course, they are... Um, they lose track of time. Uh, they always busy, busy themselves uh, chit-chatting with others. Uh, they like to know new people, new personalities. Um, they, uh, but they actually are very good at brainstorming ideas. Uh, however, they often lose time and they often lose deadlines. So after we introduce the different personality styles, you should identify honestly and be true to yourself about which style are you, which personality style do you adopt. Uh, doing that, you will be then able to know how to manage each style or how to manage your style. And when, uh, of course, in the future, inshallah, when you are a doctor or a lecturer uh, lecturing to students, you will be able to identify your, the personality style that you, with the experience you are to, uh, delivering your uh, teaching to. So for example, the achievement management, they should always keep to-do lists handy together with them and an events list to record the important events. The crisis management, uh, those who feel that everything is a crisis, they should keep a desktop calendar so that they are aware what is urgent and what's not urgent. The visual reminders works best for them. After that, the casual management, those people who just lose time chit-chatting, if you remember, and like to talk and know everyone. 
uh, those uh, can uh, the alert systems like alarms, the electronic reminders, the timelines. This will help them to be on track. The precision management styles. Those people can be helped with the day planners so that they can be focused on the big picture so that they don't lose or they don't waste time on small details, but focus on the big picture and identify the priorities all the time. The social uh, management portable alarms like the wristwatch or mobile alerts can help remind them to make their interactions short and get back to the task at hand. Sorry, the social management, those are the persons who like to know uh, new people and get to know uh, others. Those people, it works best to carry a wristwatch, mobile alerts, reminders all the time, so that they are reminded with the next task and the next, and to finish their chit-chatting or the casual uh, meetings. Another way to take control of yourself uh, or uh, something that's important that you know is your circadian rhythm, which means that your body clock, the circulation of the time, when we sleep, when should we eat, when should we, when should we do physical activities, when should we study, and so on. So going deep into that, uh, you should know that, uh, that uh, from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, this is the best time for cognitive or mental tasks, such, such as reading, calculating, problem, problem solving. This is uh, mostly uh, efficient in the morning. And of course, this is a note to tell you, if you are a night owl shift, these times are about three, four hours later in the day. Night owl, you know, those people who just uh, like to work at night, they reverse their uh, day uh, and night uh, time and start their day and they are more focused at night. So those should, uh, should shift uh, those times about three to four hours later in the day. So from eight to 12 noon, it's better or, or it is the best time to achieve your cognitive task or finalize your cognitive tasks. From 6 to 10 a.m., this is the period of the short time memory. So if you are just about to go to a, a seminar or a presentation, it's best or an exam, it's best to revise the quick revision in the morning. You will remember this if you are going to use this information just in half an hour or an hour or just short time uh, post this duration. So from six to 10, uh, it works best for the last minute reviewing for tests and best performed in early in the morning. After that, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., this is the best time for manual dexterity, which, is, which means using your hands. So if you are keyboarding, do this at this time. If you are doing some uh, hand uh, manual activities, for, for example, fixing something at home, uh, you have to uh, go grocery shopping, for example, so you are going to use your hands, you are going to carry heavy items, so it's better to be done uh, during this duration. Then from 4 to 9 p.m., this is the best time for your physical activity because your muscles are uh, in uh, uh, their peak activity time during this uh, period of time or during this time. Students, uh, studies show that you will perceive the workout to be easier in the, in the evening. During the evening, it will be easier for you to do your physical workout. And it is preferably to be done uh, two to three hours before bedtime. Uh, this will also contribute to improving the quality of your sleep. So uh, here, uh, till now, we have uh, identified, identified the concept of time management, the elements of time management, why do we need time management, the process of time management, how to uh, plan, how to organize, how to schedule, how to delegate, then how to take control of your time and of yourself, how to revise, or we knew that we have to revise our plans and schedule from uh, time to time. Um, so the most important takeaway tips that I would like you to uh, encompass is to take action. Don't wait for the perfect time or the perfect weather or condition. They don't exist. Just energize yourself and start working on that purpose and start achieving your goals. Of course, overcome procrastination. Identify the causes of the delay. Why are you delayed? Is it because something you do not understand? Is it because something you need help with? Is it because of something you need to do, you can delegate? Then just do it, but don't procrastinate. Stop multitasking, just focus. A task by a task, you are not a machine. 
you should, uh, if you started something, then you have to finish it. Set the deadline, attach a due date for everything. There is nothing uh, that even God will hear that uh, the universe it was within a specific time. So just attach time for everything. Be called your current schedule. Start, uh, wake up early, 30 minutes before uh, your uh, usual time. If you can do this, of course, I can do it. But if you can do it, then it will, uh, it will be uh, much uh, better. Uh, use the waiting time effectively. For example, if you are uh, commuting, you are uh, using a bus, you are moving to your university, so you are uh, on uh, the bus. You can do something important. Uh, you can even uh, say that your morning prayers, for example, you can uh, revise something, have a look, download articles so that when you get back at home at the end of the day, you can just read them, you can start reading them. Uh, turn your tasks into habits. If you are used to a specific routine, for example, if you are used to uh, doing exercise, then you will do exercise every day. You will feel that there is nothing, there's something that's not okay if you lost your gym for a day, for example. Delegate some work just as we explained uh, before. Uh, block out social media, Re reduce the distractions. When you are focusing on work, then focus on work. Minimize the meeting and chit chat or the casual meeting times. Ignore phone calls and emails. Batch similar tasks together. Try to uh, classify or to uh, gather the similar tasks together. So there is familiarity among the tasks that you are doing. You are doing things that are similar to each other. This, this will make you uh, uh, better, uh, better managed uh, in better management of your time and it will make you better relaxed. Learn to say no without feeling guilty. If there is something you cannot do, then don't do it. If there is an errand or some place you, uh, someone, some of your friends need you to go with you, uh, need, need you to go with them, then just learn to say no if you are busy. If you have something more important uh, that contributes to your goal, if you have something that's urgent for your study, then just learn to say no without feeling guilty. Uh, okay. Uh, also, another important tip is to learn skills beyond your, beyond your profession. Get involved in some activity. Learn something. Um, keep a hobby. A hobby. Uh, read something away from the academic reading. Um, um, implement, for example, the least thing that you can do is to exercise, which will also be another skill or a school skill beyond your profession and study. Of course, keep work-life balance between the academic schedule, the social life, and time alone, time for yourself. You know, as you get uh, uh, older and you proceed in your life, you will feel that uh, sometimes the time just for yourself, you're just sitting, not talking to anyone, not having to do anything, just half an hour, relaxed, peace of mind, just thinking, visualizing. Uh, this is very required for you as we get uh, progressed in our uh, careers and in our lives. So uh, also another important tip is to write things down. Always have a handy, a small organizer uh, handy in your bag, in your pocket. Uh, just don't rely on your memory. You will forget, you will forget things. Prioritize your list, plan your week. Provide or spend half an hour each week to go through your next week's plans, your next week's tasks. Carry a notebook with you. Sometimes, you know, in our marketing field, sometimes I, I, I get an idea on how, or, or for you, how to manage this better. So I just can write it down. Something I like, something, a new information, I want to look further in, into it. So I just have to write this down. Never stop. Life is a pace and time moves faster than you think. Just keep learning. Learning is a passion. Uh, it's always interesting to know about things you don't have an idea. Learning is a big sea that you can never reach its end. Actually, this is what I see and what I uh, adopt. I just wish that there is a, a space of time that no one, there is no work and I get paid at the same time as well. And I just spend time reading, spend time learning new things. So keep going, keep learning new things. Be realistic, not imaginary. Realistic in the time needed for each task. Don't juggle many things together. So be realistic in estimating the time for each task, but don't be realistic in dreaming. Just dream big. If there is something you can dream it, then it's sure that you can achieve it or you can reach it. Uh, 
if you want to be a, 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 a different, if you want to go to a different career, learn a whole new skill in your uh, life after your PhD, work with two uh, things together, whatever you want to uh, do, you can do it. So uh, dream big, uh, Disneyland was built in uh, 366 days from the groundbreaking to first day opening to the public, which is a motivator for us to know, of course. After that, I would like you at home to uh, do this self-assessment for yourself. Answer yes or no to the following questions. Have you estimated how many hours you need to study this semester? Get back to the first activity in this slide, uh, those uh, slides, whether uh, when you were asked to calculate the time uh, necessary to accomplish each task and what are your important tasks in the first place. Do you tend to complete your assignments on time? Of course, you have to be frank with yourself here. Have you estimated how long it takes to, uh, for example, read one chapter, one article? Do you begin working on long-term assignments at the early in the semester or you just leave yourself to the approaching deadline? Do you make lists of things to do in your head rather, rather than on paper? Of course, you should, it should be in your head, but of course you should write them down in your paper so that they are put into action. Do you participate in social activities when you know you should be studying? Do you schedule time to study for exams? Do you have a job that requires more than 20 hours a week? Do you know what tasks you are going to do when you sit down to study or you just start thinking and visualizing at the time of studying? You plan last time planning. Do you do the assignments from your uh, favorite class or favorite part uh, first? So after you answer or you provide a yes or no answer to the following questions, give yourself one point for each yes answer to questions of one, two, three, four, seven, and nine. Give yourself one point for each no answer to questions five, six, eight, and 10. Then calculate the total points you scored. If you have, uh, if you find that your score is a low one, then you need help with managing your time uh, and know and be frank and true to yourself that you are really wasting your time. Uh, if you scored a high score, then you are effectively using time management techniques. Now I finished my session. If you have uh, any questions, I'm here for you. Uh, all those uh, tools you will uh, sure uh, uh, get access to or you can obtain from the organizers of this session. And it was just a pleasure uh, being with you today. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor, for the sharing. I think there's a lot of a useful point that we highlight. Maybe there's a three, yeah, I still remember uh, how you use the more technique as a useful method to be applied, how you understand your body clock is also important because you can utilize uh, the best time for study, reading, and also to find articles. And yeah, you need to learn new skills beyond your profession. I think this is uh, one of the uh, crucial point that you highlight uh, because we have three years uh, in PhD journey. So you need to find something uh, different and useful after PhD, right? So uh, there's a one question uh, that been posed uh, in the chat box. Uh, maybe I can read for you. Okay, uh, this from Sarmat. Uh, the question is, is time consumed per day the rate limiting step in the self-satisfying or the knowledge acquired rather than time utilized? Sorry, can you repeat the question okay, again? I repeat again. Uh, is time consumed per day the rate limiting steps in the self-satisfying or the knowledge acquired rather than time utilized? Or is time consuming about uh, satisfying, self-satisfying? Or, or the knowledge not? acquired rather than time utilized? You, uh, maybe, Samad, uh, are you there? Maybe you can uh, rephrase or you can uh, uh, explain further. I think what he meant is, uh, uh, is the time you... Can you can your question, guys. It's better. No, what he mean is that uh, is the time you consume in a day satisfying, oh, I have spent eight hours working, or is it the little knowledge you have gain at the end of the day? Which one is more important? Is it the time that you feel more satisfying or the knowledge you gain? That's what he meant. Okay, is the, okay, I found it. Is time consumed per day the rate limiting step and the self-satisfying or the knowledge acquired rather than the time utilized, right? 
Yes. That's the question. Okay. Yes, yes, this is the question. Actually, both of them self-satisfying because you feel that you have accomplished real life uh, goals, you have accomplished tasks that are going to contribute to uh, your goals. And by the way, uh, uh, sometimes it's just not about knowledge acquired. Knowledge acquired, if I have acquired new knowledge related to my PhD. For example, I might have other tasks, for example, doing some chores uh, for uh, the house, uh, tidying my house, looking after, uh, for example, uh, my baby or baby uh, searching for a babysitter, for example. So those are, uh, those doesn't, don't add to your knowledge, but at the same time, they will leave you satisfied because you, you are, for example, sitting in a tidy place uh, you have uh, accomplished your uh, tasks, your chores, your home chores. Uh, so uh, it, it depends what task we are talking about. If it is about related to our study, then it might be, it will be both, of course, mainly self-satisfying, accomplishing your goals and finalizing your tasks as per the schedule, of course, it's self-satisfying. Knowledge, if you acquire knowledge related to your study, not knowledge if you were doing something that's not related to your uh, area of study. I hope this answered your question. Okay, there's another question okay. from Mustafa. Uh, is time management need practice? Is time management? Need practice. Yes, but just a little practice. It's not another task or chore to be added to your study skills and study tasks. Just start with the simple organizing, simple writing your task. Just write your things down, your tasks down. Then try to specify this. I will work on this after I wake up, for example, from 12 to 1. Make it simple. Just start, but be organized. Be in all you have view handy um, uh, besides you about what you are going to do and when you are going to finish it. But don't make it complicated. It's not another science to be uh, learned. We are enough learning in our study and PhD. Uh, I mean here, doctor, I mean by practice. Uh, it's, it's not easy task for anyone to organize his time. You know, uh, during your PhD, you have a lot of things to do, but I mean, uh, yani, as you just mentioned, yani, start from simple points, then go to complicated ones. This is what I mean. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's agree that during our PhD, time will be tight, whatever we try to do. Uh, and if you uh, calculate the remaining time at the first place that you, that's left for your uh, study and leisure, you will be surprised that we spend waste most of our lives in sleeping and in uh, going from a place to another. This is the biggest time, uh, the biggest uh, hours consumers of our lives. Uh, but at the end, we have to, we agreed that we have to finalize our PhD. So we have to do it. And we have specific time to do. So we have to take control of our time. We have to motivate ourselves. I would say that looking at the outcome, the big dream, I will be a PhD holder. I will be a doctor. After that, I, will, for example, I have finished my master's when I was working, and I have finished my PhD when I was working in the aviation industry. Uh, it was very challenging. Actually, it was very challenging. But my supervisor was very encouraging to me. He was hand in hand to me during the master's. The PhD was much easier than the master's because I was more capable of uh, knowing or identifying what research, what paper, what part will add to my uh, thesis. Um, I wrote it myself, for example. It was uh, uh, 10 years ago or nine years ago. Uh, the internet and having delegating to another person wasn't, I, I wrote it in English in Egypt, in Ismailia, in Suez Canal University. It was one of the few uh, theses to uh, discuss the branding of a whole country and to revise and criticize the branding of a country. Uh, the supervisors and the panel, maybe this, uh, what I'm saying would motivate others. Um, do it. I, I, am, I tend to be a perfectionist. I always pay attention to details and spend long time formatting things. Uh, so this was actually evident, evident and rewarding during the discussion. The discussion panel, they all said that uh, the uh, effort and the work is evident in the system. So what I would like to say here is whatever effort you make, 
it's sure that God will not waste it and it will not go away and it will characterize and distinguish you from others. This is sure, this is a belief and this is a fact. Even if there are other people who are just doing things better or getting things done or getting things done in a non-ethical way, for example, still the true efforts you put in, your, in what you are doing will be rewarded. Really, it will be rewarded. My first job uh, before joining the academic, my resume was selected among 6,000 people. I was, it was the first job for me. I was in another remote city, not in Cairo, not in the capital itself. And they always prepared to hire people from the capital itself because it was an airline, a British airline. And my CV was shortlisted among 6,000 other CVs. So I think this is rewarding and this is motivating. And um, I believe that when you uh, uh, keep pace, keep going, you will be rewarded. Life will reward you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, kindly, uh, kindly, you are a unique, a unique uh, professor. But can uh, can you share these slides with us, if you don't mind? Of course, sure. The slides and the tools within, of course, everything. I will forward to the organizer, and they are going to pass it on. To uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, maybe we thank can you. take one last question. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. Of uh, this is from Dominic. Uh, this question is. When you read and find it's hard to understand at your study time, how do you manage that time? When you read and find it hard to understand at your study time, how do you manage that time? Okay. First of all, the cause of this might be that I am at this time, I am out of mood. I am not in the mood to read. So you can just pick another task to be done. Delay the reading, start with another one. Don't start here, you can say to yourself, I shouldn't start with my eating my ugliest frog first. I shouldn't start with the biggest or the most difficult or the hateful task I don't like, for example. So try to make, to switch yourself, switch your energy and thinking to another task, a task that's more enjoyable to you, then make this task after your first break, for example. Okay. I think that's all question. Okay. okay. So uh, finally, I think we come to the end of the our session. So uh, before we uh, end our session, I would like to invite all the participants to switch on their cameras because we want to have a group photos. So the organizer will take pictures uh, for the session. So 